Welcome back to another episode of Miller's Menu here on YouTube. Today I've got a very special one. I've got my buddy Zach Martin from Red Fraser Bison and we're going to be making bison burgers right here on the Blackstone. But today it's more of education about bison and how to cook it and what the benefits are in addition to I love bison, I cook it, and I think it's a great video. So we're just gonna go do that. So before we get started, tell us a little bit about how long you guys have been around and where they can buy your your bison if they like your, the video today. Absolutely. And they wanna try it. And they wanna try it, absolutely. So I'm a first generation rancher. Uh, started the operation in 2014, built the property up, and then we've been getting product out to the public since about 2016. Um, we have multiple retail locations in Indianapolis and Bloomington um, that we, we can sell, you know, different cuts. We have all different variety of cuts. Anything that you can imagine in beef cuts, we can harvest out of bison. Um, and so we also, indianabison.com is our website. We have shipping options. We have a, a pickup option on our website where you can a la carte shop whatever you want and then come to our storefront to pick it up. So uh, yeah, multiple options on the website. We've got a lot of different restaurants that carry our product. And if you go to our website, we've got all of those listed with uh, maps showing you where our products are and everything. So it's, it's really easy once you get there. That's awesome. And that's indianabison.com? Yeah, indianabison.com. Perfect. And I have been to the retail place here in Bloomington. It's great. Jen, your partner um, is awesome too. She's very educational in there. She talks about it talks you through it if you're a novice and you're, and you're scared to go in there right. don't be she's very down to earth and she she can help you out yeah um i've all, talk about the herd a little bit i love it i've been out to your farm yep. or your ranch it's a ranch not a farm it is a ranch yes. yeah yeah <laughs> so i've been out to the ranch i've seen the herd we drove through it with yep. my truck um that is a bison from your your ranch and your herd i yep. it was harvest or it was that was butchered. a bull yeah that was a bull that we harvested um last late last year last november yeah. and i took it and i euroed it uh, it turned out okay for my first one but it was a really cool experience but talk about your herd a little bit how many you have some of the i'll put some video in and some pictures and things yeah. like that here too um the herd we've got we've got about 320 acres out in green county um it's just northwest of bloomfield kind of in between it's in the middle of nowhere in the sticks absolutely <laughs> well you know where else are you gonna have a bison herd you know, right, not right, downtown right. it's no, not no. happening downtown no no uh yeah so we got about 320 acres we, we currently own about a, around 140 animals is what we run we run around a 75 to 80 head cow herd at any given time we're we're always um trying to expand the cow herd we're slowly building as we've as we've been as we've been building out the property expanding the property expanding the fencing system and things like that we've been out there searching for top quality genetics to bring into the herd um and we've got we run a, a, a we have five herd bulls that we run that service all the ladies and uh you know, it's a rough life. It's a rough life. You know, it's, yeah, it is really. And, and, you know, everyone, the number one question people always ask is, you know, how do you keep the animals in? What kind of fence keeps the bison in? And the reality of that is there is not a fence that, that really, if, if they want to leave, they're, they're going to leave, you know, yeah. I, I, they're, they're, they'll figure it out. They are astonishingly big animals. They're like, huge. I mean, I've been around cows. Mm -hmm they put them to shame they're they're so big you can't kind of wrap your head around how big they are until you're in the middle of them even that the head when i when i got it mm -hmm. it was so big yeah. and it's so massive it, it's impressive and they're impressive animals yeah the the really you know uh, bison are you know, when, when size wise and actual pound for pound you know they actually there 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 are a, quite a few very big beef cows, big beef bulls, you know, they're, they're definitely out there comparable to the big bison, but the main difference is just the athletic ability of the bison. I mean, they can zero to 40 miles an hour and it seems like 10 steps and they can clear. I've watched one from a flat footed stance, clear a five foot gate and not even touch it. And that's, that's why I say that, you know, there is, if, 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 if the bison want to leave, they want to disrespect your fence and walk out the door, they're gonna do it. 
but what we have to do, what it's, what it's our job to do is sort of mimic the environment that they're used to and give them what they want. And you know, it's, a, it's that, that delicate balance of, 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 of boys and girls. You know, everybody's got to get their share. Um, everybody get, has to get their share of food and water. And if you really hit those three basic needs, the reality of it is the fence isn't going to keep them in. Keeping them happy keeps them on the property. And so the main thing we try to do is we try to mimic the, the, the movements that they used to have back in the day when they were grazing all across the country. You know, we try to implement a rotational grazing strategy. Well, and that's the thing I was going to mention was how you rotated from pasture yeah. to pasture and and they're not in the same pasture for more than what 30 days 45 uh, days no more like 12 12 days okay. so yeah so we, we try to keep we try to keep them on about a 10 to 12 days in one pasture and then they don't return within like 49 to well, 42 to 49 days so we try to keep a minimum of six weeks rest in between the pasture and that's for two main reasons one is land management um, yeah, by, they would destroy it. Yeah, they would destroy it. And so whenever the, the bison come in, we, we utilize them to improve the grasses and improve the grasslands. And so just like you run out and you mow your grass, well, you mow it and then you let it sit for a week. And then when it's not getting all that pressure, it has that, that immense growth because that grass is triggered for when it has, when it has any type of damage, it's going to regrow. Yeah. It's going to regrow, it's going to regenerate. And so the bison come through and they do that for us by the impact they have on the grasses and then giving that six week rest time, we really see heavy regeneration in the growth of grasses. Perfect. Yep. All right. So if you guys are interested in more information uh, about Zach or his herd, you can go check out his Facebook, his Instagram and his website, all linked in the description below. And before you know it, we're gonna get on the skriddle and then we're gonna start cooking. So stick stick around and we'll be right back. It's gonna be great. All right, we're outside. We're going to get these pattied up. These particular ones are a one pound patty, or package. And Zach, what kind of uh, packages do you guys sell them in? So we've got the one pound packages for retail and then we also have different patty size options. We've got a quarter pound, a third pound, and then a half pound patty option. Perfect, so if I'm too lazy and don't want to patty up Absolutely. my own, you, you have them already have patted them up. And then there's no arguments within the family about who got <laughs> the bigger burger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's, that's I always get the bigger burger. I, that's I how it works. I feel like that's the biggest benefit, really. <laughs> <laughs> but this is great because then you can make tacos out of it. You can do anything that you yeah, do you regular really do ground meat it. with. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you know, there is a certain uh, artistry to being able to hand patty your bone burgers. And so I completely relate to why people don't always buy the patties. It's more for just argument's sake. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, if I wanted to do other things with like putting you know, butter in it or even patting it with um, jalapenos or bacon Absolutely. or something like that. We could do that inside here if you're making it on. No. If you want to make just your own quick patties, it obviously has, you guys have that already. And I love the fact that you guys have multiple sizes. Multiple sizes. The biggest thing about bison that people sometimes get intimidated by is that literally any of your approaches, your marinades, your seasonings or whatever for beef, are completely acceptable to use in bison gear. Any of the recipes you want, uh, the, the type of food that you want, bison is a great beef substitute. Literally, the only thing to take into consideration is you just don't want to overcook it because it's so lean, it'll dry out. And so any of those recipes or marinades or whatever, you just don't overcook it. And that's literally the only thing that you have to keep in mind while preparing this stuff. Awesome. So I'm gonna make a couple actual um, burger patties, and then I'm gonna make a couple in um, just balls, and we're gonna do the old smash burger oh, with a smash. couple of them. Yeah, I was wondering if you're gonna pull that trick out. Uh, that's my favorite way I've to make a burger. I've noticed that. I've noticed. It's uh, to me that it's quicker, it's easier, and the burgers taste better. So to me, it's a no-brainer. But there's a lot of debate on. Uh, YouTube and the internet about <laughs> everybody's smash got their burgers. Own opinion. Yeah, everybody's absolutely. Got their own opinion. But I love them, so I'm going to uh, 
do a couple in those two. So we're gonna make probably three or four of these and then a couple smash burgers and just show you the difference of those. So uh, first initial, I've cooked with bison a couple times, courtesy of you and uh, buying them from Red Fraser, but the the patty sticks together and it, and it makes a patty very, very nicely. You, you always wonder, is it gonna crumble being so thick, right. so lean and things like that, so to no. me. Leaner meats do tend to have that issue, and I mean, we try to harvest every little bit of fat that we can from the bison to put into the ground so that it is able to be patted. And I mean, that's that's really the thing is, is just utilizing every little bit of the animal to get it to where you need to where it's a, a workable cooking platform. And it absolutely is. I mean, you guys are watching me patty these, and I'm not struggling at all to keep it in, in patty no. form whatsoever. So there's four there. Let's make three smash burgers. We're just gonna roll them up in um, balls and kind of audible this because I wasn't planning on doing it, but I'm we'll so, absolutely I try I was it. hoping you were gonna pull this oh, trick out. Nice. I've, I've I didn't want to offend you, but no. I, I'll be glad to. And like I said, any of the approaches with beef are acceptable. So you like a smash burger? Let's make a smash burger. And one, um, one thing that I know I compare this to a lot is venison because around here we do have deer. You cannot smash a, 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 venison, a burger. venison burger or patty it up like this. It just crumbles and it's yeah. not even an option. Yeah, the ven venison is, it's in the similar category, but it's kind of like a, almost an in-between beef and venison. I mean, it has some of the same qualities of being, le of the lean texture that venison does, but yet, has a lot of the cooking tendencies and even like a texture tendencies of beef. And so it, it gets thrown into that venison category, but it's not, it's not a full fledged commitment. Perfect. All right, they are patted up and balled up for smash burgers. So let's get back and start cooking. All right, we're gonna get these on the griddle. These, these two burners here are turned on medium-ish. This one's turned on high. That's where we're gonna do our smash burgers later. So we're just gonna start by putting some oil down like you would any burger, chicken, anything that you do. We're not gonna put it on the smash burger side quite yet. So put it on there. You can hear the, the sizzle of it. You just want to smash them. I just want to make sure it's all touching the griddle. Help. You just can't help it. Make sure it's a good flat <laughs> piece on it. It's got to leave well enough alone, Rusty. <laughs> I know it. <laughs> all right. So let's talk seasoning on these. Absolutely. So I know how you season a burger. Mm -hmm. How do you season bison? It's all personal preference. Me personally, I like salt and pepper and a garlic powder and that's really about it you can but you can get as wild as you want um, it really doesn't matter because it's not going to affect the internal temperature and that's the number one concern perfect mm -hmm. and then so i'm just going to put some salt and some pepper on these um, and then the same thing on the smash burgers a little later and we'll go from there tonight okay yeah. so you might notice that I made a lot more patties than are cooking. We already cooked them yes. <laughs> and ate them. And ate them, yes. So uh, the little record button sometimes is hard to push. So we're going to remake these again and show you guys exactly how to make them instead of just patting them up and being done. How's yeah, that? I think that'll be a good plan. That's you think that's part of a good part of the video? Good plan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you planned this all along. Yeah, didn't you? yeah. So I could make more uh, uh, burgers. You just wanted to eat more burgers. Yep. Oh, you're brilliant. I'm a genius. That's <laughs> I've been accused of that way too much. That's your problem. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so while we're cooking it, we've already done this, but talk to me about how to cook it. The pink versus purple, we've talked about a little bit. We want to talk about more. And then what kind of temperature we want to cook it to as right. well. You know, I've told you before, when it comes to bison meat, any type of preparation that you like, any beef recipe, any seasonings, any marinades, 100% applicable to bison. It totally is the only thing you have to be concerned about 
is not overcooking it so it dries out. And that involves leaving a little bit of pink in your burgers. Bison meat has a real deep purple hue when it starts. Where you've got your commercialized beef is a pink next to a bison is purple. So when you see a pink center, you've, you've risen that temperature for, and changed and you made that color transformation from purple to pink. And that's your warm center that you're looking for. People associate that with raw and that's not the case. If you see opening up and it's all gray, it's going to be overdone. It's going to be dry, and you won't like it. And one, the one, you know, the one, this, the line I've told you: people when they eat an overcooked beef burger, they blame the chef. When they eat an overcooked bison burger, they blame bison, just because they're not familiar with it and they don't understand. And that's the one thing: if you don't see pink in your burger or your bison steak, you're really doing yourself an injustice. Okay. So with that being said. Take a look again when the video is over at the thumbnail itself. We already took it. It looks fantastic. And the burger was perfect. Perfectly cooked. Yeah, perfect. Perfect temperature. Yeah. And it was awesome. But the outside of it is cooked like you would think. And it's a warm pink center. Yep. It, it got to 160, 165. Yep. It was there. Mm -hmm. and, but it does have that pink in the middle. Mm -hmm. So I don't want you guys to think that A, we're lying to you. And, and then we aren't eating in pink. No. We are. And that is cooked for bison burger. Yeah, it really is. It really is. One of the other things. So I wanted to make this video um, to expose people to bison. Yeah. Um, so one of the things that I hear a lot is, and I, I as a deer hunter, mm -hmm. I hear a lot too, is that it's gamey. Right. Okay. So, I've eaten bison several times from Red Fraser. Mm -hmm. Shameless plug. Ding, ding. IndianaBison.com. <laughs> nice. Um, but it, it doesn't have a gamey taste. No. Talk to about that. So, that, the gamey taste that you get from wild game is usually from the types of forages that the, that animal is eating within that really important window, that, that 90 to 100 day window before the animal is harvested is that the, the the diet that that animal has at that time will reflect in the meat so when you're deer hunting and harvesting these animals during the winter they've been on roughage they've eaten you know they're eating grasses that have matured past their really nutrient dense state yeah they're they're dead it's dead grasses yeah. it, it is just roughage that taste will reflect in the meat. And that's what people really associate as, as gamey. So we, when we raise our animals, we do give them access for at least 100 days to where they have access to grain and a high quality hay forage. And that really gives us consistency in our meat from animal to animal. And it, having that high nutrient dense hay and even grain and then grazing you know whatever time of year they might get go and be harvested it, it reflects in the meat and so we take that into heavy consideration as we're planning out our harvesting dates um, based on what they're eating and then also along the harvesting dates mm -hmm. talk about your your standards of the butcher shops that you guys are yeah. you're taking them there yeah. how they're the regulated mm -hmm. and the standards that you have to do in order to sell this retail absolutely so we do take all of our animals to either USDA or state inspected facilities. They have a high cleanliness standard. They hang all the animals to where they dry age for seven to 10 days at each. Oh, we're going for the smash burgers, do it. They dry age for seven to 10 days in a hanging carcass capacity. And then they're brought through labeled, inspected, and then vacuum sealed individually so that they're ready to go to retail once they leave the facility. Perfect. Oh man, that, So uh, you take the, the burger, if you guys are new to Smash Burgers, which I doubt, take a ball, put it on the griddle, make it griddle super hot, press it down, hold it to get that sear on the bottom. Mm -hmm. It only takes a couple seconds. And then you're gonna take it and flip it. And you're going to have char on both sides, and within a minute and a half or so, you're going to have two done burgers. 
for cooking temperatures me personally I like to pull my burgers and steaks off around that 145 to 155 degree temperature internal temperature range and people will a lot of times underestimate how much cooking happens during the rest period and it's really important to understand that um, when when you pull it off at that 145 to 155 you're gonna see that rise in that rest and you're then ideally you're hitting that 160 range that's a medium and you don't want to take any of your bison burgers past a medium anything past medium and that 160 mark is just going to be too dry those were literally on the griddle for i maybe maybe two minutes total yeah that was and they're at 150 right now right now that's perfect so they'll, they'll sit there and rest and they'll slowly cook that mm -hmm. and that slow cook at this point is what's really going to maintain the moisture level and we're going to be forced to try another burger just I, for the taste test. I think so, I can do that. So I I'm going to put pepper it. jack on mine. What do you want on yours? I think I'm going to stick with you and go All pepper right. jack. All right. So these two, obviously taking a little bit longer, yep. um, but they're more of a traditional burger. If that's what you like, Right. this one's already at 150. So it is done. The top side is there. The bottom side is there. We put it on there and we're going to let it rest. Mm -hmm. Not even checking that one because it's going to be the same. Yep. So we let them rest. What I like to do as a rule of letting them rest mm -hmm. is putting the cheese on it, not on the griddle, mm -hmm. just on a plate yep. and letting the heat melt the cheese yep. while it's cooking up to t and resting up to final temperature. Oh yeah, and you're, you're sealing that in. That that cheese is an insulation blanket on that burger. It's Absolutely. It's like putting a, a cap on it or the hood on yeah. it or anything like that. It's perfect. So while they're doing that, I just scrape my griddle and I'm ready to eat when they're done. Oh, man. I, I, I'm pretty excited. I think you nailed the smash burgers on yeah. this. This is, I think I'm pretty good be at perfect. smash burgers. Yeah. The others are okay, but I, I love you me. You didn't overcook it. That's, you know, I tell people at the farmer's markets, you know, a lot of the first timers are, you know, a little bit timid on w what to do and, and how they should approach this. And they, they always ask, you know, what, 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 what should they do? How should they cook it? And I, I tried to make them feel as comfortable as possible and just tell them, you have one rule. Don't overcook it. Don't burn it. I think we cheers these smash burgers. Cheers, brother. Cheers. Perfect. It's literally dripping juice people Perfectly argue moist. all the time that if you smash a burger you're going to smash all the juice out of it no. not if you cook it correctly mm -hmm. not if it, you don't overcook it and that's the same with bison you hear that all the time it's too dry it's good it's a smashed bison burger and there's juice coming out yeah. of it yeah prove it prove me wrong right prove me wrong i'll, I'll change my mind <laughs> change my mind <laughs> Uh, and that's even the smash burger has that warm pink. peak center. I mean, you nailed it again. Okay. I got good. you right as I put a you put a mm -hmm. bite in. Mm -hmm. Perfect. I want to thank you again for coming over. Yeah. Um, Red Fraser. Yep. Bison in Bloomington, Indiana, mm -hmm. Green County ish. Yeah. Well, our operations based out of Bloomington, but the the ranch is in Green County, west of Bloomington. Okay. Yes. Tell me all your places to find you. So we on our website, indianabison.com. That's the quickest way to get to our shipping options. We also have an a la carte store online that you can select the different cuts that you want, and then they can be picked up at the store or shipped. And then we have on our website, you can find all the restaurants that carry our product, all of our retailers in the Indianapolis and Bloomington area that carry our product, or you can visit us at one of the farmer's markets that we're at actively that's, again, listed on our website. And you guys do um, fairs and, and home shows and, yeah, and we, other Yeah, we do expos. other special events, and we try to keep that, you know, that information pumping out on our Facebook and Instagram pages, and then we keep an updated events calendar on the website. Perfect. Mm -hmm. um, 
I hope this is one of a few videos we do. Mm -hmm. We did burgers, which is the most common thing. Yep. Next time, I think we're going to step it up to steaks or I something so. like that. Mm -hmm. Let Tina uh, smoke a, a big old yeah. uh, shoulder or something in it one time. Yeah, so we're going to have a couple videos over the course of the next year or so. That'd be great. So I want to thank you for coming. Mm -hmm. My name is Rusty, and thank you guys for watching another episode of Miller's Menu. And we are out. Hold on, let me just get changed. All right. What? Well, wait, wait. All right. Welcome to another gun show.